We're back, people, and today we're taking a look at the Giants' defense and how they can be attacked by the Dolphins' offense going into this, you know, little game preview. The Giants, after looking at them, you know, you got to respect their defense. They have a pretty quality players back there. Got to respect the front four. They have guys who are going to bring pressure, Thibodeau, Lawrence, players like that. And looking at their defense, though, I think the Dolphins can definitely attack it. They run a lot of single high, a lot of single high. Cover one, cover three. Definitely a mix of that. They play man-to-man -man and blitz probably as much as anyone in the league. So those are things the Dolphins can definitely attack. Like if they're playing a lot of man, like their personnel is to play man defense. That's what their corners are known for. That's what they drafted them, brought them there to do. And it's going to be a struggle if they have to play zone all day against the Dolphins because it's not something they're used to. But they also can't play man all day versus these receivers and bring blitzes to has been really strong versus the blitz. Here you can see the Giants drop into a cover three. You know, they only bring four pressure. This one, you know, a few times. We got to watch out for Thibodeau because we'll watch him. We got to give Jackson some help because Thibodeau won a lot in this game. He's very good. But getting some one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside versus some corners. Look, even on this guy's gaining a bunch of depth. Lockett should never be able to get enough separation on that. But he's able to give just a little bit of a subtle move right there and accelerate past him. The ball just is underthrown and they get the pass interference. But those opportunities will be there for the Dolphins to attack. Dolphins got to stay ahead of the sticks. This is a third and long situation, and it just allows their front to eat. Look how quickly Thibodeau is able to beat that right tackle. Now, I know Austin Jackson has been much better this year, playing the best of his career, but he's facing some top-tier guys. Basically, the whole line is facing some good players, you know, like Lawrence and Williams and Ojolare. They have guys who can get there. Um, versus the run, Giants defense is pretty average. They play a lot of, you know, they have a lot of, they, since they play a lot of single high, they have a lot of bodies in the box, and as you'll see, they'll still give up some chunk of plays, so... Got to stay ahead, having a nice mix of rushing, passing, taking some deep shots when they're there, but you can have a very balanced attack in this one. Here's a pretty nice play to look at, you know, the play action behind the back, rollout. Dolphins did this a bunch last week versus the Bills. It didn't really work too effectively, and the only reason they were really doing it as much as they did was because of Eichenberg playing center, so hopefully they don't have to run this as much, but it could be a lot more effective versus this Giants defense. They get a little more aggressive. They're not as planned for it, so if they can get this going and getting that many open looks like Dolphins could have a big day on their, you know, play action rollout stuff, getting some bootleg action going. Just at least a few times I would like to see them throw it out there, but definitely not as many times as they did versus the Bills. They got to go back to what their bread and butter is. Now they're a good play to look at. First and 10, look how aggressive they get down in the box. I don't think the Giants are going to be able to do this against the Dolphins because here's the, you know, Seahawks play action behind the back. Very similar to what the Dolphins like to do hit the back foot and then throw, you know, whether you want to call it, you know, a slant, bang a, you know, drift post type of thing down the field. These are the things that Dolphins will be able to attack, especially when they're going single high and they have all this space to work with up here. Like all these guys are sucked in. You bring the motion across, just no space for them to work with. And even though, and Gino does a pretty good job here, but like with Tua, he would have already like released this football, like before he was even breaking. And there might have been even more separation because the Dolphins have some very good receivers and the Giants are in cover three there. So a lot of cover three, a lot of cover one, a lot of single high is what this defense is used to. And they might have to mix it up against the Dolphins. Some cover one, they get Drew Locke in the game and he just gets out on the move. Might have to do this a little bit with Tua. Their defensive ends, edges can get pretty aggressive and knife to the inside. We see, you know, Thibodeau trying to do it here because he has a tight end to his side. And they just take this opportunity. And you can see just man-to-man -man across the board. They play a ton of man-to-man. -man. They get all this room, just a one-on-one -on -one matchup to the outside. They end up, you know, dropping this ball out of bounds by JSN. But these guys can definitely be taken in those areas. They have the receivers to beat man-to-man. -man and if, like, I don't know if the Giants will... Like, the Seahawks have a pretty solid offense. I know it's not quite the Dolphins, but they have a lot of weapons too. And they didn't really change up their game plan for how they played other opponents for the Seahawks and didn't, you know, run a ton of quarters or things, just too high looks to switch up versus the Seahawks offense. So I don't know how much they're going to switch up versus the Dolphins. Giants, before the half, got a little bit softer in their coverages. You could see how they were getting affected. They didn't want to give up any, some, any deep shots. They were getting very aggressive. But there will be times where they play off like this and... You can just get these quick releases out, uh, especially in empty, because this guy just is able to press it vertically, and he has to match here, so he can't get out to the flat. And since he has so much depth, it's just a quick, easy completion. They even leave a guy unblocked here because they're showing pressure, and they slide to the right, and just know where your hot is going to. Uh, just get Metcalf the ball out in space. They try to bring the blitz, and you just got to know exactly where to go with that ball. 
It's a third and 10. Giants on third and 10 is this is when they're going to start throwing in some things like quarters, cover six. They're playing ha uh, deep half of the top, quarters at the bottom. And you can just see how they get out leveraged here. Like they play, even though they play this, they're playing some match. And this, since this guy's the flat defender, but he's got a match seam flat, so he matches seam on number two. This guy's re to relate to number three, but number three is late releasing out into the flat. If you give a little time, like these spaces open up, they're showing pressure um, pre snap, and then they drop out of it. And these guys just aren't used to playing these types of situations. The linebackers are going to be way more easy to attack than they were versus Buffalo. And these things will just be open underneath, and there's going to be some big plays if the offensive line can give them a little bit of extra time. Giants go zero on third and one. They're bringing the blitz. So you guys go play action, get enough time here. They float away, throw this over the top, um, maybe take some advantage of this. They're willing to go cover one, cover zero. And just running these types of concepts are something you'll definitely see the Dolphins do. One guy running the, you know, deep over, the other one coming across underneath it. You'll see different variations of this from the Dolphins. But if you're getting man-to-man -man and that you get enough time to throw these things, this is going to be open. It's very difficult to ask these corners to cover it. And when you have Tyreek and Waddle doing that out there with their speed, they can really have some big play opportunities in this game. There's also some opportunities to run the ball. They're, you know, single high look. They have enough numbers down in the box, and they're still able to find some seams to work through there. Nice play by Kenneth Walker. It's some back-to-back -back stuff. And as you'll notice... They do like the the pitch here, the wind back with like that tight end pulling through. This is definitely something you'll see. Something similar like this from the Dolphins where they pitch it out. Dolphins will try to get to the edge, but then even wind it back. Guys overflow a little bit and they hit through the lane. And then you'll see, you know, the next play, how it affects them. Then the next play to Zach Charbonnet. They're single high again, so they have enough numbers down in the box. They pitch this out to Charbonnet instead of it being on the wind back. It's just a nice pitch option. And look at all the room he has to work with. Dolphins can definitely take advantage of this. Uh, Giants like to crowd up the middle with their D-line. They'll play a lot of like tight or tough fronts. And if you get some toss out to the edge with a tight end pulling through, this is a very similar thing you'll see the Dolphins do. And there's so much space to work there with the running back, even though they have enough numbers down in the box to stop it. So I think, you know, Mike might go into his bag in this game with his running game after watching this film. At times, they will bring zero. Look at all the pressure they're showing. They brill it so much. There's no deep safety. They end up getting, you know, the incompletion at the line. They're trying to throw the, you know, deep post with the over behind it. and ends up getting tipped at the line of scrimmage. But there will be opportunities to take some deep shots. But you got to be ready for the splits. You got to be able to pick it up. They try to go play action out of it. He tries to dump it down underneath. But you're going to have some one-on-one -on -one shots. So I would like to see Tua just, once he hits his back foot in these situations, just chuck it deep. Give your receiver a chance to run underneath it. Even if it's not open, it's still a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, give your guy a chance to go up and get it. I know there's, I mean, I guess there's a chance for an interception. As long as he puts it into a decent spot, at least give his guy a chance down the field. Even at the end of the game, when they're prepared to stop the run, look at all the guys in the box, and they're still just open lanes to work with. I like how they set this up too, the Seahawks. Um, they run some different concepts than the Dolphins do. To me, you know, it looks like they're running some duo here when the receiver is able to block down. He's just reading 58. He presses up into this and then hits out into the hole and the 58 gets sucked up. You can manipulate these linebackers and the receiver comes to crack the safety and he bursts through the hole. There will be opportunities to take advantage of this running game. Their run defense is nothing special. Like the Giants defense overall, I think is pretty solid. They have some players out there that can make some plays. It's just not like the best unit in the NFL. Like it's still going to be a lot easier of a challenge than the than the Bills were. It'll be more of an, you know, it's not anything like the Broncos defense. It's definitely not that bad. It'll be more of like an middle of the pack type thing. And I want to see how the Dolphins kind of perform against them because I feel like it's like every defense the Dolphins have faced, even either super great or, you know, pretty bad. And I feel like they haven't faced too many middle of the packs. I feel like the Bills defense is really good. Page defense is also very good. And then after that, Chargers defense, not so good. Broncos defense, absolutely awful. Let's put him right down. Third and eight situation. Gotta keep eyes on Thibodeau. He's gonna win his one-on-one -on -one matchups if he gets time, especially in obvious pass rush situations. He loves to knife to the inside. Take advantage of this. He's gonna, you know, be lined up versus right tackle. Knife to the inside. Gotta be aware of that. There's things you can do to get outside the pocket too. Throw things out there into the flat. But um, yeah, just gotta be paying attention to number five. He's their big time playmaker up front. And they're all, you know, pretty solid up front. They'll definitely get their time. Their linebackers are McFadden and Okarike, who, you know, mixed bag, I think, from what I've seen so far this season. I haven't watched every game they've played, but we'll see how they look. They're definitely going to be a little more easy to attack. Their secondary has some decent players, but isn't anything special either. 
but it's really that front four where the Giants can possibly take over the game and make some game differing difference plays. So got to be aware and you know ha give Jackson some help and hopefully he can do a much better about this right tackle was just opening up and giving some free lanes. But so if you guys in the video, you should like, comment, subscribe, and subscribe.